Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this vlog on studying and living in Denmark. Uh, so I have with me Anjali Verma from India. She finished her master's recently in Denmark and in this video we'll focus on how she got full scholarship to study in Denmark and fund her master's entirely by the full scholarship. So you can check the previous two videos where we discussed about how you apply for masters, what are the admission requirements and how uh, what is her experience of studying masters in Denmark. And now we move to this video. So maybe Anjali, you can uh, like shortly uh, say like which university you studied for, how long and what is your area of study and then we can move to the scholarship part. Hello everyone, uh, I welcome you back. I'm Anjali. I'm from uh, Ranchi, India and I studied here in University of Southern Denmark, which is also known as SDU. I did my master's in mechatronics, which is a two year course. OK, so how did you apply for the scholarship and how long did it take for you to apply for it? And was the scholarship application together with the university application or was it like a separate thing that you applied? Yeah, OK, so uh, first of all, obviously you need your SOP and letter of recommendations and transcripts, uh, all those things to apply. So when I applied to this particular course, mechatronics in the STU in Sonobo campus, they have many campuses of STU. I particularly studied in Sonobo campus, which is near to Germany. So when you apply for this course of study, which is mechatronics, you are automatically enrolled in their scholarship program. Like your, your application is automatically uh, being applied for a scholarship. So you don't have to apply for any extra ex application uh, regarding scholarship. It was like that when I applied two years back. But now you can always check in the link if you have to drop an extra application for scholarship or not. But it was like that your application already goes into the scholarship thing to for them to decide if you if you could receive any scholarship or not. Yes, it was uh, like that. I just received an email from the from the student uh, assistant that um, I have been selected for the course and I have also been selected for the scholarship. They did not take any interview or anything like that. So they entirely decide based on your SOP and your letter of recommendations uh, and yes, also on your transcripts. So that's why I was, as I mentioned in previous videos, they give really, really uh, high importance to your SOP. So it needs to be, you know, quite well formulated before you apply in University of Southern Denmark. OK, so apart from the SOP, uh, what reason do you think that you had an advantage or more chances of getting a scholarship like maybe did your previous work experience helped or added value to your application in getting the scholarship or was it something else like what did you think at the end like what is the thought process like why you were uh, selected for the scholarship uh, yes, I think my previous work experience was also one of the reasons because then you are already skilled to the market. Plus, you want to come to other country to have an education. So it gives you an added advantage, you know, that you are already skilled in the market. You have already market experience and then you come for education. So you will be easily, uh, you know, uh, uh, diluted in their market as well. They don't have to train you a lot for their market. So that was an advantage. And also I did some research works with IIT Guwahati prior to my application to this university. So that was also a very huge advantage. I would say I had a letter of recommendation from IIT Guwahati. So yes, I think you should have at least uh, some, you know, really good uh, technical uh, achievements. Uh, plus a little of work experience, plus if you have worked in NGOs and all those things, then also it's it's quite quite advantage if you apply here. Does the scholarship like uh, does the scholarship provide full full funding or what expenses does it cover? Like only the tuition fees and you get something extra for the living or how does it fund you like? 
uh, scholarship covers my entire thing. To be very honest with uh, you guys, I just play, paid for my plane tickets and my visa to Denmark. After that, I paid nothing when I came here. So the scholarship was fully funded by my university. Plus they gave me around 6,000 crowns per month for my living expenses, which is around 65 to 70,000 Indian rupees. So yes, I, I was very lucky to, to get that. But this year they have reduced that stipend to 3,000 crowns, which is around 30,000 to 40,000, 40,000 Indian rupees, uh, which according to me is quite less to, to survive in Denmark. If you receive around 3000 crowns, then you have to take from your pocket around 2000 crowns for food and everything because the cost of living, the place, the collegium, they are called it a student dorm as collegium. Yeah. So the rent of that is around uh, 2.3 to 2.7 Danish crowns, yeah, around 2,300 to 2,700 Danish crowns. So you can see if you just get 3,000, then that's not enough to, to live. But I, I used to get 6,000, so I was really, really lucky. Okay, that means you can also like, maybe you were able to also save some money. Yes, I was able to from save you. some money, yes. And I also got this student job, so I actually saved a lot, yes. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So do you want to give any final advice or tips for people who want to apply for scholarship? Any particular key points that they should keep in mind when they're applying for a scholarship in any university in Denmark? Actually, uh, in Denmark, you don't get scholarship uh, in uh, other universities, as far as I know. So it's only in STU Sonneberg you get full scholarship, and that too in uh, mechatronics branch, which I studied. But recently, they have uh, started one more branch called uh, Electronics Central of uh, Industrial Electronics. So I think you can get a scholarship in that branch as well, but you must check the link before applying. Uh, and the one advice I would like to give is like, as I already uh, said, just just focus on your work, prepare yourself for around two to 2.5 years so that you have a quite uh, good uh, experience and quite good uh, things to put in your SOP so that you can get selected for the scholarship. But just do check the link of the university to know the entire procedure because here the rules changes quite often. I don't know. I mean, I applied two years back, so maybe it's a little different because a lot of things happen in two years. So you must check the link of official link of the University of Southern Denmark before applying. Okay, thank you Anjali for giving your time. In the next video, we are going to discuss about uh, cost of living. It is, it will be very interesting to know how much you can, how much you need to spend every month to live in Denmark. So stay tuned for the next video. Don't forget to smash the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. So yeah, bye.